Hello, my friends. Another week gone by. I want to talk today about breath and breathing. This is something which I didn't think I'd be talking about, but it has made a significant change to my life, what I've discovered in the last year or two about breath. And let me begin by quoting from the book of Genesis. Excuse the sexist language. God took dust of the earth and formed the body of a man or of a human being and breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life and the man became a living soul. A living soul. As far as I'm aware, it should be the actual Hebrew is har Adam, it's, it, which is not Adam. It's an earth creature who then becomes Adam and Eve once they're uh, both are created. It's not that man is before woman, but most translations still have man for that. So the breath is what make, gives us our living soul. Now, how did I go for 69 years and not be aware of the importance of my breath? that I have taken it for granted. And that's true, that's true. And yet breath work is at the basis of most spiritual traditions that I've come across. I was the sort of person who in yoga classes wanted to get on with the exercises and, you know, skip the breath. It seemed to be that because I was really after fitness or flexibility. Now I know better, now I know better. And I know that my breathing practice my day-to-day -day breathing is off key. It's not good, not good. And I think we're a breath illiterate society in so many ways. And I want to talk about three different things. This will be an introduction, breath as information. I'll talk about just as we overeat, we overbreathe. That surprised me. And nasal breathing and the importance of that and there may be another one in it but today i'm talking about breath as information breath as information one of the things that really makes me angry i think at this stage is that no therapist no psychiatrist even in the depths of depression and anxiety when i know i was breathing irregularly sighing doing all what I now know to be inappropriate. No one said, well, let's check how you're, what you're, how you're breathing. Let's start with your physiology rather than saying, okay, you're anxious, depressed, let's here, take these, take these. It's utterly irresponsible, I now know, utterly irresponsible, because I know that at least let's get the foundation right. So breath as information. OK, breathing is not just about getting oxygen into our lungs as most efficiently and quickly as we can. It's not just about that. Breathing is providing in constant information to our brains about the state of affairs around us. If we're under threat, if we're facing a threat, then our breathing becomes fast and shallow and very often through the mouth. <laughs> you're breathing like that or being sighing oh. now that information relayed to your brain tells your brain there's a threat out there there's something worrying we need to be geared up to get away from there's a threat so we go into the, the so called fight or flight or freeze response because of the information our brain is providing there's Stanford University in America have identified a part of the brain which spies on our breathing. And if it detects our breathing is fast and shallow and sighing, it'll send information to all our other systems to gear up for threat. So our brain is providing information constantly. So breathing fast, is giving information about threat. So the obverse is true. If you're breathing slow and calmly, slow 
and into your using your diaphragm your diaphragm being below your rib cage slow and low breathing slow and low and calmly then your your the spy in your brain will know that everything is calm and your whole calming system your parasympathetic nervous system will kick in and you will become much calmer much calmer move out of that flight or fright set, set of physiological responses I, I i don't know how i missed this but it's like the shoulders being up that's giving information about that but also your breath being fast and chest breathing shallow yeah that's how i miss that so it's essential for me now to get a hold of my breathing patterns and get them under control get them under control now we know breathing happens automatically most of the time and lucky it did because if we we'd forget um but we must get it we must retrain because our breathing has become set in a given pattern and now we need to reset the pattern okay so what i suggest what i've been doing is counting the number of my breaths every for a minute say how many times you're breathing in a minute now what the goal is and the gold standard is six breaths per minute when you're sitting there six 5.5 to 6 breaths a minute. Now, I was up around the 24 lying on my bed the other day. Ridiculous. So my breathing has got a set pattern that's now the norm. And I've got to change that. And that's going to take practice at breathing six times a minute. And I've got a chime and I can explain that to you later on. And we're doing, we're breathing 26,000 times a day, a day. And that means our diaphragm is going up and down 55,000 times a day. You know, 50,000 times a day. That's a muscle working. And think of all that work, extra work. If we're breathing 20 times a minute, 12 times a minute, the extra work we're putting on our heart, our lungs, our whole body, our whole body. So if we can slow it down, then we're going to, you know, our, our life is not measured in the length of days, but the number of our breaths, because that will wear us out if we keep. So it's vital we get out. So firstly, it's to get a established what rate your breathing is at. Secondly, here are two exercises which I'm doing. One is called box breathing. Box breathing is used by the Marines before they go into battle. So it's fairly established. Now that this is simply, if you don't know, it's you. Breathe in for four, one side of the box. Hold your breath for four, top of the box. Go down the other side, breathe out for four, and then again hold for four. And repeat that, repeat that 10, 15, 20 times. Box breathing. The second one I like is called, it's five finger breathing. In other words, you use your five fingers and you can inhale Pause and exhale. Inhale. Nice and deep, or using your diaphragm in through your nose and emptying. And so on for your five fingers. And you can repeat that. And that's a very, I, I liked having a physical gesture to go with the act of breathing. I think it helps. So I'm now obsessed by breathing and I hope uh, this can be helpful to you in getting control of how you are feeling and being in your world, especially at this time when our, we're under so many threats that our breathing is likely to be fast and shallow and causing us stress that we don't need to add to it, or the stress we're already experiencing. So God bless and good luck and I'll talk to you again.